Hi everybody, we got this question m raised to the power of 9 positive m raised to the power of 6 is equal to 36. The solution is there on the social media, but apparently the author of this solution maker has missed the key vital point to place in, in his solution. So that is the all important point that has to be placed because while solving this question, he goes off by using trial and error method to actually find the value for m. Now, that is not the appropriate technique to solve questions. And in this video, I would be giving you the all important technique to solve polynomials of this nature. Of course, there are many ways to solve the polynomials of this magnitude. But I would like to give you two important ways which you can adopt. Now, the first way is based on a theorem. So that would mean you can rely on it and use it as the vital tool. And the second way is more of an algebraic technique, which can also be adopted. So having mentioned this, let me go on to show you this. Now I'm going to rewrite this as m raised to the power of 9, positive m raised to the power of 6, negative 36 is equal to 0. Then I will try to represent m raised to the power of 9 as m raised to the power of 3, which is also raised to the power of 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. Positive m raised to the power of 3 raised to the power of 2, negative 36 is equal to 0. So now you can really see that I can use let u to be equal to m cubed. So if I were to take this as 2, therefore I can rewrite 2 as u raised to the power of 3 positive u squared negative 36 is equal to 0. This is the cubic equation. Now, how do we solve equation or polynomials of this nature? Very simple. We would be using what is called as the rational root theorem. Now, rational root theorem, I also have a video which I would place it in this particular link or in this particular video description. You can actually go and watch that. That is done using rational root theorem and that is a complicated question. And in this case, it is simple. Now, what is exactly the rational root theorem states? Now, you have a constant term and you have the term with the power. In other words, the variable with the power. What we actually do is we take the constant term factors. So, if you want to find the root, I'm just explaining it in layman terms. So, the root is going to be the possibility of the root is going to be the factors of constant term, all factors of the constant term divided by the factors of the leading term. Leading term. So in this case, the leading term is going to be this. So the coefficient of leading term is 1. So the factors of 1 is going to be 1 itself. But in this case, the factors of the constant is going to be I am going to start with 1 plus 1 divided by the factors of the leading term. It's always going to be 1. So in this case, it's going to be plus 1 or minus 1. So I can state it like this, plus or minus, followed by the factors of 36 can also be 2, right? So plus or minus 2. The denominator, there's no point in writing the factors of the denominator because it's always going to be 1. So that's the reason I'm just dropping that. And it's going to be plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, right? And plus or minus 9, and so on and so forth, it goes on. You can list out all the factors. But for me, I am sure I can zero in the root just by picking up these values. So I don't have to go on in writing. So that's one of the ways you can also find out which would be the factor. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is what is called as the all-important synthetic division. This is a very important tool you will have to learn or practice. 
Now, how does this work? Now, what do we do is we place in the coefficients of this equation. So, the coefficient of u cubed is 1, coefficient of u squared is 1, coefficient of u, the u term is missing, right? So, we always start with the highest power and then move down. So, it's actually return and descending order. So, it's going to be 0 there because u term is missing and the constant is going to be negative 36. You have to represent the coefficients along with the signs. Now, clearly I know, I can see it, that 1 is not going to be the uh, the root here. 2 is not going to be, 3 is not going to be, uh, 3 can be a root. So, it's always a guess and check. So, I'm going to place uh, positive 3 there. So, I will bring the quantity 1 down. So, 3 times 1 is 3. 3 added with 1 gives me 4. 4, added, uh, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 added with 0 will give me 12. 3 times 12 is 36. So, you get a 0 here. So, that would mean 3 is a root. Now, why do I show you this? Now, I'm showing you this technique, synthetic division, because I'm able to extract the actual quotient here. This is a polynomial. So, therefore, if I were to write u cubed plus u squared negative 36 as a product of two quantities, I can very well start by writing if u is equal to 3 is a root, then u minus 3 is a factor. And this is the quotient. So, this is going to be starting with u squared positive 4 times u positive 12 is equal to 0. Right? This is what we have got. And clearly, from the law of algebra, you know that if a times uh, b is equal to 0, then this would mean a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. So, if a is equal to 0, this in turn would mean u minus 3 is equal to 0, which means u is equal to 3, but my u is m to the power of 3. So, this would mean m cubed is equal to 3, which in turn means m is equal to you push this 3, it becomes third root of 3. So, this is a real root or I would say a real value for m that solves this system. The system will be solved if m is equal to third root of 3. So, that is the solution. So, that is one way you can adopt. And this is a very powerful technique by the use of rational root theorem. Okay. So, having mentioned that, what is the other way? Now, if you were to use this one, this is this is going to lead you into complex roots because for the fact calculate b squared negative 4ac b squared is 16 4a is 1 and c is 12 so you get 36 negative 48 which is going to be negative 32 which is clearly a quantity in other words the discriminant is less than 0 so thereby this is going to lead us into complex roots so we are not interested in that. So we will settle for this. Now alternatively, if you are not interested, this is the other way. Now having obtained a u cubed positive u squared negative 36 is equal to 0. You can take u squared out and write this as u positive 1 negative 36 is equal to 0. So you can push this 36 to the other side. So you get u squared times or u squared of u positive 1 is equal to 36. Now I've got u squared, this is a perfect square, right? So, I want to uh, actually split 36 so that I am having a perfect square as one of the terms. So, that is the clue, right? So, one of the ways I can do is I can have a 9 year and a 4 year. 9 fours are 36. I don't want to have 12. 12 and 3 also gives me 36, but I wouldn't be able to handle this u squared. So, my idea is to have a perfect square. So, I got u squared of u positive 1. So, this would mean I can equate u squared is equal to 9 and uh, u positive 1 is equal to 4. So, u is equal to 4 minus 1. So, u is equal to 3 here. In this case, u is going to be root of 9. Now, square root is a single valued function. Of course, you might be tempted to say plus 3 and minus 3 are the roots, but it doesn't work like that u is equal to root of 9, square root is a single valued function. So, u is equal to 3 in this case. So, we have got u is equal to 3. So, thereby, we are actually getting the same quantity of m being equal to third root of 3. So, this is the next way. 
Well, I have given you these two ways. There are also other ways by which uh, this particular question can be solved. But the main focus of this particular question, or I would say of this particular video, is to bring to your attention this all important rational root theorem, which can be used not only for this, but in several cases. So I am going to place a link here so that you can see how for a polynomial system which is greater than 3, a degree greater than 3, I am using a rational root theorem to factor it out. And I hope this is of informative nature to you and you have learned something. Thank you everybody. Have a wonderful day.